In this video, we're going to look at um, how cell potential is related to Gibbs free energy. And uh, in the next couple of videos, we're going to actually look at uh, the, the link between basically cell potential and thermodynamics. So the link, the link here is going to be that um, we can relate the cell potential to the Gibbs free energy. Once we have the Gibbs free energy, we can start to do a lot of different things because then we can relate it to things like the equilibrium constant or to Q, um, depending on which equation you're going to use. And Q is the reaction quotient. So um, for, for this link, for cell potential and Gibbs free energy, we know that the work that can be done by a cell is equal to minus NFE cell. We just saw that in the last video. Now, if we go back to chapter 18, what we remember is that the Gibbs free energy is actually a measure directly of how much work a cell can do. So delta G naught is essentially equal to um, the work that's done by the cell. So we can combine these two equations into one, and we can say, well, okay, so delta G naught is going to equal minus NFE naught cell. And now we have a link between thermo, so this is our link between chapter 19 and chapter 18. Once we can get to delta G, then we can get to, to a whole variety of different things. Um, we can get to uh, things like K, the equilibrium constant, and the relationship here is minus RT ln K. We can get to the standard heats of formation, delta G naught formation, which is the equation where we have delta G of the reaction is equal to the sum of the delta G naught of formation for the, from the products minus the reactants. And we can also get to um, things like delta H and T, delta H minus T delta S. So once we have this link, now we can take E cell and we can do a variety of different things um, from chapter 18. And this is going to give us a lot of flexibility in looking at what we can do in chapter 19. So one thing I want to do, though, is I want to stress the correlation between delta G and its sign and E cell, because this is really important. So if we have E naught cell and we have its sign and we put delta G and its sign, then we can decide, well, okay, is something going to be spontaneous and what about work? So if E naught cell is positive, then because we have the negative sign in the equation, then delta G will be negative. So this is going to be spontaneous in this case when we have a positive cell potential and a negative delta G. And work, the workflow can be done from the system onto the surroundings. Now, if we have it the other way around, if we have a minus sign for E cell, well, then delta G is going to be positive. This is going to be non-spontaneous. And then it's going to be the opposite. The surroundings is going to do work on the system. So this is going to be our voltaic cell. This is going to be our electrolytic cell. Um, and then this is going to set you up for a fundamental understanding of, of what we're going to do. So now let's look at some problems where we can go, where we can go in either direction, where we can calculate um, E cell from delta G and where we can calculate delta G from E cell. Okay, so here's lecture problem eight. And this is where we can calculate, uh, we can start to do some of those calculations with delta G. So the first one, this is actually going to be a repeat of the process we used in the previous video, where uh, what we did was we basically took, um, we figured out the work given a, a re, uh, an electrochemical reaction. So for this one, um, we know that delta G is equal to minus NFE cell. So to calculate delta G, we got to figure out what the E cell is. So in this case, the anode is going to be zinc goes to zinc 2 plus plus 2 electrons and our cathode is going to be silver plus plus 1 electron goes to silver and to get everything to balance we would have to multiply this by 2 so from this we know that n is going to equal 2 and then if we calculate E cell by looking up the cathodes ha uh, half reaction that's going to be 0 0.8 volts and then if we subtract the standard reduction potential for zinc, which is uh, minus 0 0.40 volts, we get a total of 1.20 volts. So now we have the two things. We, we have with the N, oops, 
we have the n is equal to 2, and we have the cell potential. So to get delta g for this guy, we're going to type in minus 2 times 96,485 coulombs per mole times the E cell, which is positive 1.20 volts. So delta G is going to equal uh, three, minus 301,000 joules, 301,000 joules. Now normally delta G naughts are reported as kilojoules, so the best way to write this would be minus 301 kilojoules per mole. Um, but if we don't specify what what unit, you could you could obviously write it in joules. But I'm just kind of reminding you that that delta G naught typically is in kilojoules um, when we report it. That's what you would find for a, a delta G of formation, for example. Okay, so let's look at this second one. So the second one is saying, calculate the standard cell potential of a cell at 25 degrees Celsius with the reaction uh, Mg solid plus copper 2 plus gives Mg2 plus plus copper solid. So if we want to calculate E cell, we have our equation. So we can say that, well, E cell is going to equal minus delta G naught over NF. So what I, I basically did was I brought over the minus sign and I brought over the NF to the other side. And so what we need to get here is we need to get the delta G naught for the reaction and we need to get uh, N and we need to get F. Now N is pretty obvious from this electrochemical reaction because N is going to equal 2. This is a 2 electron transfer from copper to copper 2 plus to copper. So we've got N, we've got F, that's a constant. So now we've got to get delta G. And what they're giving us here is they're giving us delta G of formation for these guys. So, um, because what says free energies of formation here. So we now have to calculate the Gibbs free energy change of the reaction based on these delta G of formation. So if you remember back from chapter 18, the way that we do this is we say, well, delta G of the reaction is going to equal the sum of delta G naught of formation of the products minus the sum of delta G naught of the reactants. So if we plug in the numbers, this is going to equal minus 454.8 kilojoules per mole, minus 65.52 kilojoules per mole. So um, copper 2 plus is my uh, product, so we put that over here. Uh, magnesium 2 plus is my reactant, we put that over here. And notice I didn't give you delta G of formation of the magnesium or the copper. That's because those are zero kilojoules. The reason for that is because they're elements in their standard state. So they get zero kilojoules. So that we don't even have to tell you that. You should just know that off the bat. So delta G naught, when you do the math, is going to equal minus 520.3 kilojoules per mole. So now we have to convert this to joules. Um, we have to convert this to joules. And the reason for that is because when we go into delta G is equal to minus NFE, the units have to be in joules. So if we convert this from kilojoules to joules, uh, we get minus 520.3 times 10 to the third joules per mole. It's going to be our delta G naught. So if we calculate E cell... E cell is going to equal the minus 520.3 times 10 to the third joules per mole divided by 2 times 96,485 coulombs per mole. And we have to put an, a, a negative on the outside of all of this because remember it's minus delta G over NF. So if you calculate that, the E cell for this is going to be a positive 2.6, uh, positive 2.70 uh, volts. And this makes sense because our delta G had a negative sign, so our cell potential better have a positive sign. So this was this is the first video in the series of a couple of different videos where we're going to look at how we can relate delta uh, E to delta G and then to other thermodynamic parameters. Now, one thing I want to mention is that this was one of the two ways of coming in to get delta G.
Another perfectly legitimate way would have been for us to give you delta H and delta S data and then have you calculate delta G of the reaction from uh, the delta H and delta S using delta H minus T delta S. So that's something you should keep in mind when you're doing this. Um, all of the stuff that you've learned in chapter 18 will apply to chapter 19 and you have to be able to use these equations seamlessly, meaning you have to be able to pull any one of those equations out exactly when you need to use it and know it. Um, so this is a very equation heavy section and it's really important that you have them at, the, at your fingertips.